Okay, we're going to pick up on a study that we've already done. It got lost, misplaced, and we'll pick it right back from the beginning again. But a study called the Fool's Study. And there's one thing the Bible directs Christians and those that study the Bible is you're not to be a fool. In this study, we're only going to see a very minute good fools compared to the vast fools in the Bible. And we're going to look at, Lord willing, every part of the fool. For the fool itself, 66 times in the Bible. Foolish, 52 times in the Bible. Foolishly, 12 times in the Bible. Foolishness, 20 times. Fools, 42 times. And fools as possession, seven times. And we're going to get into an introduction of long boringness of facts and figures of the Bible. There are more cases of a fool found in the Bible than a birthday. And written to us that 199 times fool the, the root word of fool shows up in the Bible. In 189 verses do we see the word fool and thereof. In the Old Testament, 147 verses. In the New Testament, 42 verses. Now you would think right away, but as far as percentage, the percentage column shows the ratio of matching verses to the book verse count. 23 verses in Ecclesiastes out of the 222 verses, 10.36% of those verses deal with a fool. Proverbs, 78 verses of 915 verses. That's 8.52% of the book. A fool. Titus. Two verses in Titus of 46 verses. 4.35% fools. And I'm not going to go into them all, but that's just a percentage of the verses in the Bible. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Fool as a noun. One who is destitute of reason or the common powers of understanding, an idiot. That's Webster's. That's not a lot of people say, oh, Sally, you said that. That's Webster's dictionary, 1828 dictionary. I wonder how they modified that in the modern Webster's dictionary. Some persons are born fool and, and are called natural fools. Others become fools by some injury done to the brain. Number two, in common language, a person who is somewhat deficient of, in intelligence, but not an idiot, or a person who acts absurdly, one who does not exercise his reason, one who pursues a course contrary to the dictates of wisdom. So, verse, verse one. Uh, the first definition, an idiot. The second definition, one that's not an idiot. And that's not a contradiction. The definition is a destitute of understanding. That is an idiot. Destitute of wisdom. You're not an idiot. Wisdom is what you know. Knowledge is, I mean, knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. Understanding can puts it all three together into practice. A person can know and have wisdom how to know, but if he doesn't apply the understanding to do, that's an idiot. But with a definition where somebody is dictates contrary to wisdom, there is hope. That he will gain the understanding. Experience keeps a dear school 
but fools will learn in no other. We'll see one verse in the Bible with school. Three, in Scripture. Oh, whoa. Dictionary, quote in Scripture. King James, no less, 1611. Fool is often used for a wicked or deprived person. One who acts contrary to sound wisdom in his moral deportment. One who follows his own inclinations. One who prefers trifling and temporal pleasures to the service of God and eternal happiness. So we've got an idiot, no understanding. We've got a fool that won't apply wisdom. And we've got a wicked man. The Bible does not want us to be fooled. The Bible does not want us to be living the way of wickedness once we're saved. Paul says, abstain from all appearance of evil. You're not to even have a brown bag if it's a bottle of Coca-Cola. You look like you're drinking alcohol. You ought not carry a white pen or pencil in your mouth. It looks like you got a, a cigarette. Abstain from all appearance. You don't have to be doing it. But if it looks like you're doing it, that's foolish. And a wicked person and deprived person that does not do what God tells them to do, that's a fool. And let's look at that as we go through it. I'm not going to do it every week. But let's look at the guy who has no understanding in the fool as an idiot. Let's look at the guy who has not applied wisdom but can apply understanding as hope. Because there will be places in the, in the Bible we're going to read that there's more hope in an idiot than a fool. And then we're going to see fools in the Bible that they're just contrary to God. Fools I can think of right offhand. Cain, Jezebel, Ahab, uh, Abs Absalom, not the one, Judas, that's the one I was thinking of. Demas. Man started out right with wisdom of God and understanding and left. That's a fool. Number four, a weak Christian. So, if we're doing this study, I, for the main reasons, I don't want you to be a, a fool. I want you to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want you to go to the best your ability that God's given to you and go over the edge a little more. We're not to be weak. In the eyes of the Bible, in the eyes of the dictionary that quotes from the King James Bible, from a man that honored God, in his fourth definition, he says a weak Christian. Man, you can't stand on the promises of God. You can't rely on God. You can't put your faith and trust in God. You cannot be sustained by God. You cannot give your sins over to God. The Bible says you're a fool. A weak Christian, a godly person who has much remaining sin and unbelief. Listen, this is Webster's 1828 Dictionary. You get yourself a copy. You can get it online. You can get a CD. Or if you want to pay the money, you can get the book itself. They got, you can find people to print it. Number four is a weak Christian, godly person who has much remaining sin and unbelief. Those are people, well, I, I think I can lose it. Uh, I don't really sure the King James Bible is the Bible. You hang on to that, that sin in your life that you just enjoy. You don't want to give up. Foolish. Uh, number five. A term of indignity and reproach. You call someone a fool, that's a reproach. You're calling them. You're giving them a, a, a scolding. Thou fool means correction. Number six, one who counterfeits folly. At buffoon, <laughs> I haven't heard that one in a long time. Buffoon, as a king's fool. So, pretending, a jester. He acts the fool, so he get laughed. He plays the humorous side so people will laugh at him. In the dictionary, not the Bible, but the dictionary, you're called a fool. 
If you will, if you will do anything to get a laugh, you're a fool. That's the king's gesture. That's his job to make the king happy. It's a people pleaser. It's a comedian. Comedians are fools. They get paid to make people laugh, according to the dictionary. I keep forgetting where I am. Uh, number one, again, to play the fool, to act in a buffoon, to jest, to make sport. Practical jokers are fools. According to the dictionary. Well, let me tell you this story so you'll all laugh. That is a buffoon. That is a fool. To act out stupidly is a fool. To play an idiot when you're not is a fool. To act like one void of understanding. Well, I can think of one right now. That's a fool. I played a fool one time on that verse in English class in high school. Tech school, whatever you want to call it. I wasted the whole class with foolish questions so we would be bypassed of a test. That was a fool. When you come up and have a argument with a man that is presenting the gospel in some way, such how, and you're just trying to buy time, you're trying to stall time, you're trying to catch him up, you're trying to uh, avoid them from continuing the gospel. I had a guy come up to me one time, I was preaching the gospel, I got a joke for you. Where did Cain get his uh, wife? Whatever it was. You're a fool. You come up to me professing to be a Christian and you're going to interrupt the preaching of the gospel so you can talk about a stupid joke. That, the dictionary, is a fool. Now the dictionary has no authority. The dictionary is not inspired. The dictionary is not the word of God, but these are some strong verses or definitions. And yet, I guarantee if I were to break out a 2018 copyright of Webster's Dictionary, these would not be in there word for word. People would be offended to be called an idiot, yet that's a definition. An idiot is a compliment, because I can call you fool. we got to start wearing our backbone. we got to put our spine back in. Jellyfish. Uh, okay, number full. VI, verb, something. To trifle, to toy, to spend time in idleness, sport, or mirth. Listen to the example again. Is this a time for fooling? That's an example. Sport. Let's go watch a ball game. Let's go watch a bunch of people make 500 left-hand turns. Let's go and do something that has no value to God. Let's sit down. I don't know. Do they have soap operas anymore? Let's sit down and watch soap operas all day long. Let's sit down and watch golf. If there's anything idle and stupid, is golf. I just probably lost a whole bunch of people there, but come on, man. That's worse than tennis. Tennis. Dun, 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 dun. That's a foolish idleness. Practical jokes. I had one guy one time go, oh, for a joke, I was going to steal your cane. That's practical joke. That's a fool, especially when you didn't repent. Fool DT. That's verb something. I'm a fool when it comes to the English language. To treat with contempt, to disappoint, to defeat, to frustrate, to deceive, to deceive. That's Satan's a fool. He deceived Eve. There are men in pulpits today. There are women in pulpits today. They deceive. They are fools. There are people that will come to you and try to swindle you money out of your pocket. That is a fool. 
disappoint. When you don't turn out the great expectation that your parents have set for you, you are a fool. When you have not set out to be somebody in your life, you are a fool. When you disappoint God by having ashes from wood, hay, and stubble at the judgment seat of Christ, you are a fool. When you have other Christians be frustrated by what you've done, you are a fool. Again, we haven't we haven't touched the Bible yet. Page two of twenty nine pages. Continue. Number two. To make foolish. To make foolish. We'll look at foolish in a moment. Number three. I did not know this one. But I kind of, by the expression, I've heard of it, just not the definition. To cheat as to fool one out of his money. Now, I've heard a fool and his money is soon departed. A fool and his money. That, that means he, he has recklessly spent his money and has none. But this right here, to cheat, is that salesman that sold you that piece of junk, whatever it is, that's a fool. And God will charge him at a fool at either judgment whether he's saved or lost. That politician that we just had election day, when he does not do Anything he has said to do does not even do a percentage there. He may not cheat you out of money, but he cheated you out of his, your right to vote. That's a fraud. That's a fool. When you go to the store and you buy a package of, of food that you bought throughout your years, and you open up that package and over the years you had six patties, and now you got five patties and the price is more. That's a fool. And you'll stand before God as a judgment for deceiving. When you teach other people the ways of religion that is deceiving, that's not the way, the truth, and the life as Jesus is. You are a deceiver. You are a fool. You've cheated people out. And with religions, I say as far as cheating them out of money, they give offerings to your whatever you are, your religion. And when you give money to a religion and they don't offer the salvation that the Bible says, you are a cheat, you are a fool. Oh, think about all the, the people in ministries of false imagery, uh, false imagery, and idolatry. Oh, let me add that one now. Out of false religion, think of all the people going to be charged as fools. Now let me ask you one more question before I go even further. The Bible speaks about giving us a new name. All right. Have you ever read Pilgrim's Progress? You ought to. John Bunyan, Paul, John Bunyan, Paul Bunyan, Mr. Bunyan, has given names to characters in the bio, in, in his book, Pilgrim's Progress, that represent that person. Talkative, won't shut up. Faithful, to the end. And there's much more. I, I, I what if we got a name in heaven, a new name written down, that coincide with our Christian character? Would you really want a name for all eternity as fool? And yet, do we not classify all ourselves one way or the other? As foolish. Man, when you go through this study, if you do not see yourself in this list, I see myself. And I'm just in the definition. And we ought to, we must, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. We must confess the sin of being a fool or doing foolishness. When was the last time we repented of fool? I don't think I ever have. And I need to. I fit in this list. Number two.
to spend for things of no value or use. Have you got something in your house that you purchase and it sits in a drawer, it sits in a cabinet, it sits in a closet, it sits in a garage, it sits in one of those uh, self-storage areas, it sits somewhere and just never to be used again. Never to even be found. It has no value. Now if you were to find it again, it would be, oh, I'll have this at the next yard sale. Have we not bought things in our life that had no value? Have we not done things of no value in our life? What does cigarettes get for you? It has no value. What does drinking alcohol have? It has no value. What is our time wasted not doing things for Jesus Christ? No value. It will not earn a gold, silver, or precious stone in the judgment seat of Christ. It has no value because if it's no gold, no silver, no precious stone, then it would be wood, hay, or stubble. <coughs> wood, hay, or stubble has no value. And you will see that in the book of Ecclesiastes. No value. Vanity. All is vanity. The things we spend our money on, the things we do, the things we don't do, the things we don't spend our money on may be classified as fools. Or foolish. Now, Webster's 1828 dictionary, foolish. Adjective? A. Adjective? Not adverb. Adjective, I would Void of understanding or sound judgment applied to a general character. And that matched the first definition we have of fool. And that was a classification of an idiot. He does not have judgment. I'll tell you where the fools are today. The light is definitely red. Pure. He has no judgment to know that red means stop. How many times we've we been guilty on that one? Sound judgment. How many times? And maybe not as much. But it has happened, has it? Have we not gone to the to the store? Have we not picked up a thing, quart, quart, gallon, half gallon of milk, brought it home to only realize, look on the date, it's going to expire too soon, or has expired? That's not sound judgment. Aren't we supposed to read the labels? Sound judgment. When we go back to purchasing something and we find out it's a dud. Uh, we now, with the internet that we have, look into major purchases we're going to make. Sound judgment would be, oh, I'm going to build a house in California. Why did the earthquake destroy my house? Oh, I'm going to build my house in Florida. I'm not going to prepare for a hurricane. I'm going to build a house up in New England, but I'm not going to put heat in the building. That's sound judgment. Sound judgment is, I'm going to go throughout my 24-hour period of day that God's given me, and I'm not going to study or read the Bible at all. That's not sound judgment. Number two, unwise, imprudent, acting without judgment or discretion in a particular thing. And with the street ministry, get people going, that's not what Jesus would do. That's foolish. Because it's exactly what he's doing. That would be no discretion. I mean, there are people who walk on a bus and they didn't bring their money. They didn't check their pocket. They didn't have their money ready. Exact change only. I mean, everybody knows a bus, exact change only. And you are not prepared when that bus is coming down the street to be ready. To put it right in the box and then go sit down. Um, and we can just go forever without judgment. Number three, proceeding from folly or marked with folly, silly, vain, trifling. Again, we got that foolishness. We got that practical joker. We got that stand-up comedian. We got, let's make everybody laugh. Now listen, I'm all for jokes. 
I'm all for laughing. Matthew 7 says, Be prepared for all of us to give account of every idle word. Second Timothy 2 says, But foolish questions avoid them. And we'll see stuff like that. I mean, I believe there's a thing for joking and all that, but when it's followed by lying, when it has completely disregarded the subject at hand, when it has interfered with the possession that is going on. Being stupid and silly. Again, that word vain means no value. Now, I think some jokes are going to be good at the judgment seat of Christ that, you know, they were, they were unhappy, they were sad, and you cheered them up. And some of them, did you really need to say that? Was that really applicable to the situation? That would go under one time where some store, I forget where it was, something. The guy comes up to me and starts telling me a joke and turns out to be a filthy joke. It's like, I didn't want to hear that. That's foolish. Thing. Number four, ridiculous. Despicable. Do I need to say anything? It's that's just totally ridiculous. That's fool. Foolish. The word itself speaks foolish. Number five, in scripture. Foolish. Wicked. Sinful. Acting without regard to divine law and glory. Or to one's own eternal happiness. If I do something according to the scriptures that's wrong, that will lose me a crown, that will make my Lord God and Savior upset, angry, frustrated. Remember that word? I am doing something foolishly. If the Bible says, Thou shalt not bear false witness, and I tell a lie, that's foolish. I've gone contrary to the Scriptures. Gives an example in Galatians 3. Oh foolish Galatians. Number 6. Sinful. And foolish lust. 1 Timothy 6. Flee. Foolish lust. So that's set forth. Of what the Bible stands. That sets forth what the dictionary says. Again the dictionary is not infallible. It, it's got errors. He's got Roman Catholic doctrine in there. Roman Catholic, uh, Catholic itself. Events in the dictionary. And customs. Why don't we pick up and go through the Bible. And see what the Bible has to say. Genesis 31-28. These are going to be in order, hopefully. I can make mistakes. Don't think me to be holy and right. I'm not. I make plenty of mistakes. I am a fool. I've done foolish things. And Genesis 31, 28. The first fool in the Bible, by word, is foolishly. And has the not suffer me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Thou hast done foolishly in doing so. Now this is Laban. Jacob has gathered his hire for many years serving Laban. That, that story is not applicable to what we're studying now. And Jacob's taken off. And the reason Jacob takes off is God says, get out of here, it's time to go home. Number one. Number two, he sneaks out because you will find out if you study, he's afraid that Laban's going to take all the animals back, though he worked for them. He's going to take all the grandkids back, uh, Laban's grandkids, though he would. And he'll take his two daughters and their nurses back. And I think Jacob has a right cause to think that. But 
Laban approaches him, and God comes to him by dream by night. He said, you better keep your hands off, Jacob. That's mine. You be careful what you say to him. He's forewarned by God, so meeting with Jacob, he says, it is foolish that you didn't give me opportunity to kiss my sons and daughters. In the condition of natural, yes, that is foolish, Jacob. If you're going to depart somewhere far away for a long period of time, say goodbye to the family. But Jacob has a, for Jacob himself, he fears his father-in-law. He fears that his father-in-law is going to leave him walking home with just the shirt on his back. And if the shirt was given to Jacob by Laban, he would have taken it. But in general sense, it's true. It would be foolish. That's the first foolish, foolishly in the Bible that we find. It's a departing goodbye. Jacob flees Laban for a hard, cruel treatment, treatment and wages change ten times. Jacob fears, again, that Laban will send him away empty. And further reading in this chapter, you'll see that. And Jacob has all right for the, the labor and the employment that he gave. Principal foolishly here is not allowing a proper goodbye. The family is leaving for a new life in a new area. And that's where it stands. The first man to speak the first foolish root word is a man that is foolish himself. He won't keep his word. He's into idolatry. Rachel has stolen his, his religion. He has mistreated a man of God. And I believe, this is my own belief, right? I'll tell you when I believe what I believe, and you can throw it in the garbage. I believe that if Laban had the chance, and it wasn't for God meeting him that night, I would have believed he would have taken those animals back. He would have taken his daughters back and taken the children and sent Jacob off. He already scrounged him Ten times of the payment. But that's the first foolishly. By a fool himself. Laban would have been those fools. Now the next one we'll take. Take one more. Numbers 12. Ooh, look at the best. Don't even go in Exodus. Numbers 12. 11. I got it right here. But I'm going to turn my pages with you. Because I want to make sure that as I turn the pages, you're going to turn the pages, and I can keep up with you that I don't go too far. Numbers 12, 11, next time. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherewith we have done foolishly. There's a, there's ne the next time it shows up, foolishly, Wherewith we have sinned. Alright, now the situation in this one. Is Mo Moses has married a, a woman of Ethiopia. Non-Jewish. Aaron, his brother, and Miriam, his sister, start having a gab session. They start talking about Moses and his wife. Uh, it says in verse 1 is uh, verse 12 and Aaron and Mo yeah, and Miriam and Aaron spank against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman who he had married for he had married an Ethiopian woman well this got God angry and God comes up shows up and says all right you three get out here like God spoke to Laban about Jacob isn't that interesting? God speaks to the three of them, and particularly Miriam's mentioned first, and then Aaron. And he says, And the, and the Lord spank suddenly unto Moses and to Aaron to Miriam, Come out, you three. Uh -oh. 
Verse 6. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. So God gets angry about these two talking about Moses. It doesn't say anything about the wife. So not only are they speaking bad about the wife, they're speaking bad about Moses. And God comes to Moses' defense. Aaron comes to repent. And in his repentance, we have done foolishly in our sin. We were void of understanding on how important you are with God, Moses. We were unwise in acting without judgment when we kept our mouth open when it should have been shut. It was, <coughs> excuse me. It was silly and vain, worthless, the words that we said about you. It is totally ridiculous. <laughs> and it's wickedness. So insulting Moses, a man that is surely chosen by God, which is the sin. Speaking against the mixed marriage, or is it Moses only that God speaks to? Now some who defend mixed marriages would say it's the mixed marriage that God got up with. God never said anything about the mixed marriage. He said Moses. God didn't mention Ethiopian woman. God didn't mention Ethiopian wife. He said what you said about Moses and defended Moses. And when you speak ill of somebody that God is using, preacher, evangelist, missionary, teacher, when you are speaking ill of them or their family, you are doing a foolish act. It's Moses' character. It's foolish to question God's relationship with Moses. Now, outright, the thing is, Miriam and Aaron were wrong. All right? And there are people who speak ill of the pastors and Sunday school teachers and all that. They're wrong. They're foolish. But in a few cases, there are some who will take the Bible, Scripture with Scripture, and say, hey, that person's wrong. It has been done in the Scriptures. And they have been not charged with folly. Paul will name people. Peter named people who were foolish. And you can get someone to say, oh, touch not the Lord's anointed, do the prophets no harm. That does not apply to you. When you've got a woman that is preaching and the Bible says she's not to be preaching, you have all right and it's not foolish to speak up and say, hey, you're doing wrong. Hey, did you hear those lies that that guy said? You're not being foolish. You're not false uh, accusing. Miriam and Moses were. And it came to God's defense that um, you got a problem. It is foolish to bad mouth any man that God has put into the office of the ministry. But then it is more foolish to boast yourself of some special gift. Now Moses is meek. Moses is, is humble. Moses didn't care. God did. And when we do this foolish remark or this foolish action, God will step down and do the rebuking. It may not happen on this earth. It may not happen in this world. But what if it happens at the judgment? Saved or lost? Have we not been charged as fools? Have we not done foolishness? I mean, that's two. That's two of 199. 
If you not found yourself foolish yet, we'll hit you. And if we don't hit you on the study of fools and not to be a fool, we come to the conclusion of this whole thing. You say, in the end, oh, that wasn't me. <laughs> You're a fool. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If there's one sin that all men have in common, we lie. We always stretch a story. We just color, we just color coat the lies so it makes us look good. And according to the definition, and according to at least two verses in the Bible so far, we are also fools. I'm glad that day I'll get a brand new body without sin, without foolishness. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears. But most important, a body that will never be a fool again. I encourage you to get these videos out. Pass them on to your friends, download them, put them to your computer, put the link out, get the word out. Let's help people grow. Let's help them to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ.